Hi friends, welcome back to the new video. This is a part of video series on famous personalities, their life stories and biographies. If you are new to this channel, do subscribe for getting updates of new videos. Today's story is of William Shakespeare, whose immense contribution in English language, plays, dramas, poem, etc. is world renowned. In front of your screens, you can see text of a write up right now. So during I narrate this text and explain it, do read the text in your mind along with me so that it will help you in remembering the story and understanding more clearly. So let us begin. Short Biography of William Shakespeare William Shakespeare, an English poet and playwright, Shakespeare is widely considered to be the greatest writer in the English language. He wrote 30, 38 plays and 154 sonnets. William Shakespeare was an English playwright and poet who is widely considered to be the greatest dramatist of all time. Also known as the Bard of Avon, Shakespeare's plays and poems are known throughout the world, but his personal life is shrouded in mystery. Let us know who was William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, baptized on April 26, 1564, was an English playwright, actor and poet and is often called England's national poet. Born in Stratford-upon-Avon, England, he was an important member of the Lord Chamberlain's main company of theatrical plays from roughly 1594 onward. Written records give a little indication of the way in which Shakespeare's professional life molded his artistry. All that can be detected in that in his 20 years as a playwright. Shakespeare wrote plays that capture the complete range of human emotion and conflict. Known throughout the world, the works of William Shakespeare have been performed in countless hamlets, villages, cities and metropolises for more than 400 years and yet the personal history of William Shakespeare is somewhat a mystery. There are two primary sources that provide historians with a basic outline of his life. One source is his work, the plays, poems and sonnets and the other is official documentation such as church and court records. However, this only provided brief sketches of specific events in his life and provide little on the person who experienced those events birth of William Shakespeare. Though no birth record exists, church record indicates that William Shakespeare was baptized at Holy Trinity Church in Stratford upon Avon on April 26 of 1564. From this, it is believed he was born on or near April 23 of 1564 and this is the date scholars acknowledge as William Shakespeare's birthday. Located 103 miles west of London during Shakespeare's time, Stratford upon Avon was a market town bisected with the country road and the river Avon. Family of Shakespeare William was the third child of John Shakespeare, a leather merchant, and Mary Arden, a local land, landed heiress. William had two older sisters, Joan and Judith, and three younger brothers, Gilbert, Richard and Edmund. Before William's birth, his father became a successful merchant and held official positions as alderman and bailiff, an office resembling a mayor. However, records indicate John's fortunes decline sometime in the late 1570s. Let's hear the childhood and education of Shakespeare. Scanned records exist of William's childhood and virtually none regarding his education. Scholars have sur surmised that he most likely attended the King's New School in Stratford, which taught reading, writing and their classics. Being a public official's child, William would have undoubtedly qualified for free tuition but this uncertainty regarding his education has led some to raise questions about the authorship of his work and even about whether or not William Shakespeare ever existed. William Shakespeare's wife and children William Shakespeare married Annie Hathaway on November 28, 1582 in Worcester in Canterbury province. Hathaway was from Shottery, a small village a mile west of Stratford. William was 18 and Annie was 26 and as it turns out, pregnant. Their first child, a daughter, their name Susanna, was born on May 26, 1583. Two years later, on February 2, 1585, twins Hamnet and Judith were born. Hamnet later died of unknown cause at age 11. The Lost Years of Shakespeare There are seven years of William Shakespeare's life where no record exists after the birth of his twins in 1585. Scholars call this period the Lost Years and there is wide speculation on what he was doing during this period. One theory is that he might have gone into hiding or poking games for the local landlord, Sir Thomas Lucy. Another possibility is that he might have been working as an assistant schoolmaster in Lancashire. 
It is generally believed he arrived in London in the mid to late 18, 1580s and may have found work as a horse attendant at some of London finer theatres. A scenario update updated centuries later by the countess by the countless aspiring actors and playwrights in Hollywood and Broadway. Let's look at the King's Men. By the early 1590s, documents show William Shakespeare was a managing partner in the Lord Chamberlain's Men, an acting company in London with which he was connected for most of his career. Considered the most important troupe of its time, the company changed its name to King's Men following the crowning of King James I in 1603. From all accounts, the King's Men company was very popular. Records show that Shakespeare had works published and sold as popular literature. Although the theatre culture in 16th century England was not highly admired by people of high rank, many of the nobility were good patrons of the performing arts and friends of the actors. Let us see at actor and playwright. By 1592, there is an evidence William Shakespeare earned a living as an actor and a playwright in London and possibly had several plays produced. The September 20, 1592 edition of Stationer's Register, a guild publication, include an article by London playwright Robert Green that takes a few jobs at William Shakespeare. There is an upstart crow beautiful with other feathers, with our fe feathers, that with his tiger's heart wrapped in a player's hide, suppose supposes he is an he as well able to bombast out a blank verse as the best of you, and being an absolute Johannes factum, is his is in his own concert the only Shakespeare scene in a, count, in a country, Green Road of Shakespeare. Scholars differ on interpretation of this criticism, but most agree that it was Green's way of saying Shakespeare was reaching above his rank, trying to match better known and educated playwrights like Christopher Marlowe, Thomas Nash or Green himself. Early in his career, Shakespeare was able to attract the attention of Henry ruthlessly, the Earl of Southampton to whom he dedicated his first and second published poems, Venus and Adonis, and The Rape of Lucerys. By 1597, Shakespeare had already written and published 15 of his 37 plays. Civil records show that at this time, he purchased the second largest house in Stratford called New House for his family. It was a four-day ride by horse from Stratford to London. So it is believed that Shakespeare spent most of his time in the city writing and acting and came home once a year during the 40-day Lenten period when the theatres were closed. Let's see about Globe Theatre. By 1599, William Shakespeare and his business partner built their own theatre on the south bank of the Thames River, which they called the Globe Theatre. In 1605, Shakespeare purchased leases of real estate near Stratford for £440 which doubled in value and earned him £60 a year. This made him an entrepreneur as well as an artist, and scholars believe these investments gave him the time to write his plays uninterrupted. How was Shakespeare's writing style? William Shakespeare's early plays were written in the convenient style of the day, with elaborate metaphors and rhetorical phrases that don't always align naturally with the story's plot or characters. However, Shakespeare was very innovative, adapting the traditional style to his own purposes and creating a freer flow of words with only small degrees of variation. Shakespeare primarily used a metrical pattern consisting of lines of unrhythm, ambit, ambic pentameter or blank words to compose his plays. At the same time, there are passages in all the plays that deviate from this and use form of poetry or simple prose. Let's see short bio of William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare was born in Stratford upon Avon on 23rd of April 1564. His father William was a successful local businessman and his mother Mary was the daughter of landowner. Relatively prosperous, it is like the family paid for William's education, although there is no evidence he attended university. In 1582, William, aged only 18, married an older woman named Annie Hathaway. They had three children, Susanna, Hamlet and Juliet. Their only son Hamlet died at just 11. After his marriage, information about his life of Shakespeare is sketchy, but it, it seems he spent most of his time in London writing and acting in his plays. Due to some well-time investments, Shakespeare was able to secure a firm financial background. Leaving time for writing and acting, the best of these investments was buying some real estate near Stratford in 1605, which soon doubled in value. It seems Shakespeare didn't mind being absent from his family. He only returned home during Lent when all the theatres were closed. It is thought that during the 1590s, he wrote the majority of his sonnets. 
This was a time of prolific writing and his plays developed a good deal of interest and controversy. His early plays were mainly comedies, example Much Ado About Nothing, A Midsummer's Night Dream and his stories, example Henry V. By the early 17th century, Shakespeare had begun to write plays in the genre of tragedy. These plays such as Hamlet, Othello and King Lear often hinge on some fatal error or flaw in the lead character and provide fascinating insights into the dark, darker aspects of human nature. These later plays are considered Shakespeare's finest achievements. Some academics known as the Oxfords claim that Shakespeare never actually wrote any plays. The content Shakespeare was actually just a successful businessman and for authorship such a straight name such as Edward de Vere. Nevertheless, there is evidence of Shakespeare's in the theatre as he received a variety of criticism for people such as Ben Johnson and Robert Greene. When writing an introduction to Shakespeare, first folio of published plays in 1623, Johnson wrote of Shakespeare, not of an age, but for all time. Looking at Shakespeare, the poet, William Shakespeare wrote 154 sonnets, mostly in the 1590s. These short poems deal with issues such as lost love. His sonnet have an enduring appeal due to his formidable skill with language and words. Now let me tell you guys, in the days when Shakespeare used to write, which is in 1500s, there were no popular means of entertainment in those days. So the people of today's, as we have movies, YouTube, cinema theatres, in those days, the people used to act in the plays and the live dramas and people used to spend their time in the church or listening to music and to the poems. So at the time in which Shakespeare was born and lived his life, this time the Shakespeare dramas, plays and poems were hugely in demand and not only in the place where he lived but much more bigger areas. So let me not, uh, let me tell, tell you one sonnet. Let me not to the marriage of two minds admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when it alters, alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. The plays of William Shakespeare. The plays of Shakespeare have been studied more than any other writing in the English language and have been translated into numerous languages. He was rare as a player, playwright for ex excelling in tragedies, comedies, and his, his stories. He def definitely combined popular entertainment, entertainment with an extraordinary poetic capacity for expression which is almost mantric in quality. This is Lord Plonus Hamlet Act 1 Scene 3. This above all to thine own self be true and it must follow as the night the day. Though can't not then be false to any man, farewell my blessing season, this is thee. As you can see the uh, writings are not that easy to understand in today's English terms. But this is the old form of English with, of which Shakespeare have written. During his lifetime, Shakespeare was not without controversy, but he also received lavish praise for his plays, which were very popular and commercially successful. His plays have written an enduring appeal throughout history and the world. Some of his most popular plays include Twelfth Night, Henry V, Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Hamlet, King Lear, Othello. This is quotes from As You Like It, Act 2. All the world stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exists and their entrances. And as one man in his time plays many parts. This is such a beautiful quote which is world famous. This is admired and taught in most of the English schools. Take a look at Shakespeare's epitaph. Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear to dig the dust enclosed here, blessed by Yaman, your space, his stones, and curse be your moves, my bones. These are, these are William Shakespeare's plays. While it's difficult to determine the exact chronology of William Shakespeare's plays, over the course of two decades, from about 1590 to 1613, he wrote a total of 37 plays revolving around several main themes stories, tragedies, comedies, and tragic comedies, early works, histories, and comedies. With the exception of the tragic love story Romeo, Romeo and Juliet, William Shakespeare's first play were mostly histories. Henry VI 
part 1 2 and 3 richard 2 and henry 5 dramatize the destructive results of weak or corrupt rulers and have been interpreted by drama historians as shakespeare's way of justice justifying the origins of the tudor dynasty julius caesar's portrait upheaval in roman politics that was that may have resonated with viewers at a time when england's aging monarch queen elizabeth i had no legitimate heir thus creating the potential for future power struggles shakespeare also wrote several comedies during his early period the whimsical a midsummer night dream the romantic merchant of venice the wit and wordplay of much ado about nothing and the charming as you like it and twelfth night other plays written before 1600 include Titus Andronicus, The Comedy of Errors, The Two Gentlemen of Verona, The Taming of the Shrew, Love's Labour's Lost, King John, The Merry Wives of Windsor, of Windsor and Henry V. Let's see at works after 1600's tragedies and tragic comedies. It was in William Shakespeare's later period of after 1600s that he wrote the tragedies Hamlet, Othello, King Lear and Macbeth. In this, Shakespeare's characters present vivid impressions of human temperament that are timeless and universal. Possibly the best known of these plays is Hamlet, which explores betrayal, retribution, incest and moral fa failure. This moral failure often drives the twists and turns of Shakespeare's plot, destroying the hero and those he loves. In William Shakespeare's final period, he wrote several tragic comedies. Among these are Cymbeline, The Winter's Tale and The Tempest. Though graver is stone than the comedies, they are not the dark tragedies of King Lear or Macbeth because they end with reconciliation or unforgiveness. Other plays written during the period include All's Well That Ends Well, Major for Major, Timon of Athens, Coriolanus, Pericles and Henry VIII. Let's see reason how did William Shakespeare die. The exact cause of William Shakespeare's death is unknown, though many believe he died following a brief illness. Tradition holds that Shakespeare died on his 52nd birthday, April 23, 1616, but some scholars believe this is a myth. Church records show he was interred at Trinity Church on April 25, 1616. In his will, he left the bulk of his possessions to his eldest daughter, Susanna. Though entitled to a third of his estate, little seems to have been gone to his wife, Annie, whom he bequeathed his second best bed. This has drawn speculation that she had fallen out of favor or that the couple was not close. However, there is a very little evidence that two had a difficult marriage. Other scholars note that the term second best bed often refers to bed belonging to household's master and mistress, the marital bed, and the first bed and first best bed was reserved for guests. And numerous suggestions have been put forward. John Ward, the local vicar of Holy Trinity Church in Stratford, where Shakespeare is buried, writes in a diary account that Shakespeare, Dretton, and Ben Johnson had been merry meeting, and it seems drank too hard for Shakespeare died of fever there contracted. In 1616, there was an outbreak of typhus, the new kind of fever of those times, which may have been the cause. The average life expectancy of someone born in England. London, England, in the 16th century, was about 35 years old. Shakespeare died, age 52. Now imagine somebody living the life of 35 year old and dying so early, and this is the average age. So you can consider how science and technology in medicine have advanced in today's days. That people are living the life of 70s and 80s, and even in 90s and 100s. Let us look if Shakespeare write his own plays. About 150 years after his death, questions arose about the authorship of William Shakespeare plays. Scholars and lit literary critics began to float names like Shakespeare Marlowe, Edward de Vere, Francis Bacon, men of more known backgrounds, literally accreditation or inspiration as the true authors of the plays. Much of this stemmed from the sketchy details of Shakespeare's life and death of contemporary primary sources. Official records from Holy Trinity Church and the Stratford government record record the existence of William Shakespeare but none of this attests to him being an actor or playwright. Skeptics also question how anyone of such modest education could write with intellectual perspectiveness and poetic power that is displayed in Shakespeare's works. Over the centuries, several groups have emerged that question the authorship of Shakespeare's plays. Most serious and intense skepticism began in the 19th century when adoration for Shakespeare's was at its highest. 
The detractors believe that the only hard evidence surrounding William Shakespeare from Stratford upon Avon described a man from modest beginnings who married young and become successful in real estate. Members of the Shakespeare's Oxford Society, founded in 1957, put forth arguments that English aristocrat and poet Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, was the true author of the poems and plays of William Shakespeare. The Oxfordians said there was extensive, extensive knowledge of aristocrat society, his education, and the structural similarities between his poetry and that found in the works attributed to Shakespeare. They contend that William Shakespeare had neither the education nor the literary training to write such eloquent prose and create such rich characters. However, the vast majority of Shakespearean scholars contend that William Shakespeare wrote all his own plays. The point out that other playwrights of the time also had sketchy stories and came from modest backgrounds. They contended that Stratford's new grammar school's curriculum of Latin and the classic could have provided a good foundation for literary writers. Supporters of Shakespeare's authorship argue that the lack of evidence about Shakespeare's life doesn't mean his life didn't exist. They point to evidence that displays his name and the title pages of published poems and plays. Examples exist of authors and critics of the time acknowledging William Shakespeare as the author of plays such as The Two Gentlemen of Verona, The Comedy of Errors, and King John. Royal Accords from 1601 shows that William Shakespeare was recognized as a member of the King's Men Theatre Company, formerly known as the Chamberlain's Men, and a groom of the chamber by the court of King James I, where the company performed seven of Shakespeare's plays. There is also strong circumstantial evidence of personal relationships by contemporaries who interacted with Shakespeare as an actor and a playwright. Literary Legacy Remains what seems to be true is that William Shakespeare was a respected man of the dramatic arts who wrote plays and acted in some in the late 16th and early 17th centuries, but his reputation as a dramatic genius wasn't recognized until the 19th century. Beginning with the Romantic period of the early 1800s and continuing through the Victorian period, acclaim and reverence for William Shakespeare and his work reached its height. In the 20th century, new movements in scholarship and performance have rediscovered and adopted his works. Today his plays are highly popular and constantly studied and reinterpreted in performances with diverse cultural and political contexts. The genius of Shakespeare's characters and plots are that they present real human beings in a wide range of emotions and conflicts that transcend their origins in Elizabeth Bentham, England. Let's see some quotes of Shakespeare from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Biography, Literaria. Shakespeare no mere child of nature, no automation of genius. No passive vehicle of inspiration, possessed by the spirit, not possessing it, first studied patiently, meditated deeply, understood minutely, till knowledge became habitual and intuitive, wedded itself to his habitual feelings, and at length gave birth to the stupendous power by which he st stands alone, with no equal or second in his own class, to that power which is seated him on one of the two glossmithen summits of the poetic mountain, with Milton's his com compere, not rival. Let's see some of the popular quotes of Shakespeare. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then the false to any man. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether this nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them to die to sleep. This was a famous quote from Hamlet, to be or not to be. There are more things in heaven and earth where to than are dreamed or in our philosophy. We are such stuff as dreams are made on and our little life is rounded with sleep. This is another quote from Tempest Prospero. The fault, dear brutes, is not in our stars but in ourselves that we are underlings. This was from Julius Caesar. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player, that struts and frets his heart upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is tale told by an idiot, full of sound and furry, signifying nothing. Macbeth. There's nothing either good or bad, but things make it so. From Hamlet. 
सेल्फ लव बाई लीक इज नॉट सो वाइल अ सीन एज सेल्फ निगलेक्टिंग अर डाउट्स आर ट्रेटर्स एंड मेक्स एस लूज द गुड वी ऑफन माइट विन बाई फियरिंग टू अटेम्प्ट दिस आर सम ऑफ द कोड्स ऑफ विलियम शेक्सपियर दिस वॉज द लाइफ स्टोरी ऑफ विलियम शेक्सपियर हिज बायोग्राफी टू His writings are considered one of the best contributions ever created by human mind. His mysterious life and his achievements inspire us till today. His writings, plays and poems are admired by people of all generation. His life had lots of ups and downs. His most of the life span is unknown even till today. Many criticize for writing the stuff which actually doesn't occurred but many believe that some things happened and they believe into that but still many of them still disagree that william shakespeare have written all the work which is named after him but as you know people will believe and people will not believe it's up to us whether to believe it or not do subscribe the channel and share with your friends do like the video as it motivates me in doing more stories students can copy the notes from the text on the screen they can scroll the video they can reverse the video and they can check and they can write the notes to other viewers they can enjoy more of these videos in upcoming future so definitely please sub subscribe and also like the video and also share with the people of equal interest and the people who loves to listen the stories as they say words are sharper than swords so always use them wisely do take care of yourself and meet you again in the next video